we continue on our quest to learn how to parameterize a curve C. And in 5b, we're going to parameterize any circle in 2d by going angular. Remember, this means that the parameter measures the angle. In the next one, we're going to parameterize any ellipse. But first, as always, let us be boring and remember that a curve needs one parameter and it's important to distinguish between parameterization and a change of variables. Change of variables is what we do when we're integrating. This is parameterizing. It's done at the beginning. So what does a circle look like? That a circle has the form x minus p squared plus y minus q squared equals r squared. And x equal to p, y equal to q is the center of the circle r is the radius. And the rule is that you parameterize this circle by setting x of t equal to r cosine t plus p, y of t equal to r sine of t plus q. r is a number. p and q are numbers. t is the only variable, the parameter here. And if we are not given any other instructions, then to get the whole circle, the closed curve, we need t to be from 0 to 2 pi. So if we're parameterizing the circle, these are our rules. Let's see an example. Example. x squared plus x plus y squared minus 4y equals 0. This is a circle because of the following. First, notice that there's no constants. That's going to make this side positive when we work it. So that's good. And the second thing is that the coefficient of x squared and the coefficient of y squared are the same. In this case, they're 1. But if they were a number, you would divide out by that number so that you get a 1 with a 1. OK, what do we have to do in order to get to this format? We have to do one of the things I really hate to do, which is called complete the square except that it's useful here, as opposed to finding roots of a quadratic equation where it's just boring. Anyway, the first thing we do is we group the x's and we group the y's. And then we complete the squares on each of those separately. So x squared, whatever this sign is here, plus is whatever the sign is here, plus. This is going to be a plus, and this one over here is going to be a minus. Now we need a 2, but we're not allowed to change things, so this is a 1 here, so we need to multiply by 1 half, so that 2 times 1 half gets the 1 there. Go over to the second part. y squared minus, and now we need the same 2 here, but now we have a 4, so what's left is 2y equal to 0. We haven't changed anything in the original implicit equation. Now we complete the square. We say this is x plus, again, this is the sign, 1 half squared. But now we have more. We have 1 half squared, so we have to subtract it out. So 1 half squared is 1 fourth. And over here we have plus y minus the sign here, 2 squared, which gives me y squared minus 2 times 2y but it also gives me plus 4, so I have to subtract 4. Remember, these are always minuses because the last member is always a plus, so we have to subtract out. Equals 0. So now we're almost there. You can see it almost. x plus 1 half squared plus y minus 2 squared. And on this side, we have... 0 plus 1 fourth plus 4. So that gives us x plus 1 half squared plus y minus 2 squared equals, and this altogether is 17 fourths. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that p equals how much? Notice that there's a plus here and a minus here, so it's minus one half. We can conclude that Q equals minus two, so exactly two, 
And finally, we can conclude that r equals the square root of 17 over 4 equals the square root of 17 over 2. So this is all of the information we need now to parameterize. So what is our parameterization? S of t equals brace x equal to the square root of 17 over 2. Cosine of t minus 1 half. And y equals the square root of 17 over 2. Sine of t plus 2. And because we were not given any interval, that means we have the whole circle. So t is from 0 to 2 pi. And this is the parameterization of our example. Let's check it. So the first one here is the original implicit function. Then this is where we completed the square. And this is our parameterization. And we should get three copies of the same circle. Let's go for it. Click down here in the input bar. And we'll put our first one in, which is x squared plus x plus y squared minus 4 times y equals 0. Hit enter. There's our first circle. Here's our center at minus 1 half, 2. And we can see that our radius is about, the square root of 17 is a little bit more than 4 over 2. So about 2 and something, right? Okay. So that's our first circle. Let's see that our completing the square is correct. Next one down, we're still in the input bar. x plus 1 half squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 17 divided by 4. Hit enter. Good job. There's no nothing new, so it must be the same one. And number 3 is our parametric curve. So we're still down in the input bar. We start to type curve. And our first expression is squirt of 17 divided by 2 times cosine of t minus 1 half. And then the next one is squirt of 17 divided by 2 times sine of t plus 2. And then our parameter is t. Our start value is 0. And our end value is 2 times pi. Hit enter. We should see nothing new. And we don't. And then if you want to, you can put a point on the curve and make it go around so you can see where the start point is. So let's do that. We remember that we need a slider. T from 0. Tab. Raise the 5. 2 times pi apply and then we have down here in the input bar our point is capital A equals this is our parametrization little a a of t and so take t back to 0 and there's our start point right there and if we go around we get back to that point so exactly once everything is a-ok -okay. So these are our formulas. We should write them down in a single place so we can find them. And remember, R is a number. P and Q are numbers. The parameter is T.